Hello, and thank you for joining us in celebration of RPAP's 30th anniversary. We started back in 1991 as a small part of Alberta Health and Wellness. The original sexy name, Rural Physician Action Plan, truly was an action plan developed by uh, a multidisciplinary external working group that identified evidence-informed programs that would make a difference to support medical education at an undergraduate and, and residency level, support practicing rural physicians to give them the tools they need to be successful, and to help support rural communities. As the early 90s progressed, RPAP became its own independent NGO. It got picked up by the College of Physicians and Surgeons, and the registrar at the time, Dr. Larry Olhauser, agreed to be the chair of the steering committee. There were 111 vacant spots in rural Alberta. And I remember one of the ministers said, so what do you need? And I said, here's what I think we should do. And, and uh, he said, how much money do you need? And I said, I need a million dollars. And the minister said, great, let's do this. And so that was a start of the impetus to, to really focus on getting good care to rural Alberta. Now, Dr. Olhauser actually spent the $1 million recruiting physicians to rural Alberta. At that time, there were a lot of very competent doctors who graduated from South Africa. And they all would say to me, well, I have a cousin, I have a friend back in South Africa. So we chose to say, Let, let's go and see if we can talk to these people and recruit them to rural Alberta. The recruiter and I flew over to South Africa. And we actually filled 95 spots. And what I understood is about five years after this event, uh, they were uh, almost 100% of people were still in the area that we recruited them to. Dr. Olhauser realized that they needed someone to manage an orientation program for the new South African doctors coming to Alberta. We are really lucky by finding David Kay. Uh, like I'd never known him, but we worked really well together. I used to fly my own twin engine plane, and so every town that has a, a real hospital has a, at least a 25 or 3,000 foot paved airport strip and so we simply fly in there, meet the doctors and it was really, I thought, important for them to see us face to face, right? And so it was just that moment of seeing David, hey, no, we're, we're going to Two Hills today, no, we're going to Manning tomorrow and we leave here at 5 and we back at 8 o'clock and like this, the idea that we actually can make a difference if people out there know we're interested. Back in the day, there was no website. There are no pamphlets, so I learned HTML and got the first RPAP website going. Uh, got Microsoft Publisher and published some pamphlets and basically ran the RPAP from my home office. An RPAP board of directors was formed and David Kay reported to that board. Around the table were people from the AMA, the universities, government, a few physicians that were there uh, to represent the physicians that were rural. We were all people with like mind. We were all interested in rural medicine. We were all interested in improving rural health care. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I remember one of the running jokes at the, in the early meetings was that there were uh, 10 members on the committee and five of us were Davids. It was bizarre. As the number of RPAP programs grew, staff and contractors were hired. In 2005, RPAP set up an office in downtown Edmonton. One of the things that RPAP had going for it was its size. We were smaller, we were more nimble, we could be more responsive, and we could be responsive much quicker than those other well-intentioned organizations. In collaboration with the province's medical schools, RPAP initiated the Rural Alberta North and Rural Alberta South residency programs. And having those residents trained in rural Alberta and being able to help with that training has improved the, the quality of medicine in the rural areas and given us a definite leg up with, with recruitment of physicians. The big thing were the training programs, training medical students in rural skills, but also in, in helping physicians who were placed in rural areas to upgrade their skills, to help them cope with some of the things they needed to learn. In collaboration with the province's medical schools, RPAP managed accommodations for medical students going to rural Alberta for clerkships and residencies. In collaboration with the Alberta Medical Association, RPAP established a rural locum program. Uh, On-call can become quite onerous for old guys, older guys, so the uh, locum program was a real godsend. 
because uh, we could divest ourselves of some of the on-call, especially on weekends. ATV accident uh, unwitnessed out of Cataract Creek, about 40 minutes west of here. One and two and three. RPAP created a series of training videos for new physicians entitled GEMS, General Emergency Medical Skills. When you're in rural practice, often you feel isolated. And, and what RPAP's been able to do is, is really connect a lot of the physicians and other health professionals through uh, a lot of the education that we do, a lot of the uh, on-site uh, in-services and training and bringing other professionals out to rural communities to really keep them uh, connected to the bigger system and give them the kinds of supports they need uh, to feel confident and safe in how they practice in rural environments. The first recipient of the Alberta Rural Physician Award of Distinction is Dr. Stuart Iglesias. In 2002, RPAP introduced the RPAP Rural Physician Award of Distinction. Dr. Stu Iglesias of Hinton was the first recipient. And we would have a community celebration, literally, where everybody came. RPAP hired rural consultants to travel throughout rural Alberta to coach community attraction and retention committees using research-based strategies. In 2016, David Kay left RPAP for a new position with the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta. RPAP board chair, Dr. Bert Rietzma, was in charge of finding a new executive director. Well, the applicant was uh, somewhere with his biker gang and somewhere down in Arizona. The long story short, that was Bernard. <laughs> we basically, we hired a biker. <laughs> but it, was, it turned out very well, actually. Shortly after, RPAP was rebranded to RHPAP, the Rural Health Professions Action Plan, still known as RPAP. It would now focus not only on rural physicians, but all rural health professionals. It's been interesting to see the change with the introduction of the little h, that it's rural health as opposed to rural physicians. Um, and I think that's a good thing because um, healthcare, especially in a rural setting, it's a team sport. The board of directors was expanded to include representation from the rural municipalities of Alberta, and the College and Association of Registered Nurses of Alberta and the Health Quality Council of Alberta. I think one of the greatest successes of our PAP's reach across this province has been our board of directors. And an RPAP is a vehicle to lead the way and, and to, to make your, your dreams come true and, and dreams of communities come true. You know, as president of RMA, I got to hear how dramatic the needs were. To see the people that are now in place trying to address those needs, I think um, RPAP needs to be recognized for that. The amount of programs and the amount of work that is being done just amazes me. I've really enjoyed being part of the RPAP board. I love the, the passion that every board member has as well as the staff. They're so delightful to work with and we're able to share our knowledge and our wisdom and our expertise in our different areas. And I think I've been very lucky in the leadership team that I've hired and in turn the folks that they've hired to work for the RPAP organization. Jonathan Cook who's our Director of Communications and Marketing has an unbelievable team on the social media side and their reach is phenomenal. Rebecca Seidel, who leads our Community Development and Engagement Program. In the last four years, she's built that tenfold and constant positive feedback about the work of her team. Amy Deagle is our Director of Health Professions. She joined RPAP last year and built a team to enable a program that supports rural Alberta health professionals, from nurses to midwives to other practitioners, return to school to get education they need to better serve their communities. This program has taken off and it's just going to grow as the years go forward. The REAL program is just one more way that RPAP is helping rural Albertans keep healthcare close to home. David Rumer was hired as our Director of Corporate Services three years ago and took over our housing program also. And he and his team manage about 130 properties in 50 communities across the province and we have a almost perfect fill rate with residents and nurses using those properties while they're doing rural learning. He also manages all our finances and forecasting and I think we have one of the most accurate forecasts and expenditure reports ever. 
And last but not least, I have to say many thanks to Colette Featherstone, my wonderful executive assistant. She's been with me and, and supporting the board for five years and is phenomenal in her work and her attitude and approach to her work. We couldn't have done it without her. You know, as an employee of our path, I'm really proud of the impact that uh, we've made as a small organization uh, with a small budget, but we've had a huge impact in communities throughout rural Alberta. It's a small organization with a great big heart that does all kinds of great work in rural Alberta. RPAP's made a difference by focusing consistently on rural Alberta and working with rural communities exclusively. And as a result, um, healthcare providers in rural Alberta really appreciate the support they get from RPAP because they see it as unique and only focused on, on smaller rural communities. And I think for committees as well, they just see that it's made a real difference um, in terms of what they can do to help support health providers in their own home communities. I cannot imagine trying to do the work that we're doing now without the support of, of RPAP. At that very first meeting, uh, we had our, our um, RPAP area rep that said, okay, here's what you do. And number one, and number two, and we did the top 10 things that it would take to become uh, an RPAP committee. In that first year of recruiting, we recruited 25% of the doctors that were recruited in, in Alberta for rural hospitals. So uh, yeah, it was pretty successful. They've had the skills and the knowledge to help make us a more effective recruitment and retention committee. RPAP makes a, a, a huge difference um, for rural healthcare. And being able to bring nursing skills days to us, those kind of things are, are huge to, to showcase what rural healthcare really looks like. And without the support of RPAP, we wouldn't be able to showcase that. We've had consistent funding, which we're grateful for from the government of Alberta. For sure it stands out, the relationship is the ministry, because ARPA is 100% uh, funded, it uh, works at arm's length of the ministry. So that is, I think, very crucial for the uh, vitality of the organization. Every single event we have that's community-based has been a blast. The whole town comes out, all the participants come out that are part of our program, the docs, nurses, you name it. You know, every Rhapsody Award, every Physician Award, every Community Award, every event like that has just a great deal of fun to it and a great deal of kindness and caring and recognition that what we're doing is of value. We know how to have fun too, like in this video celebrating International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Hi, matey. Happy International Talk Like a Pirate's Day. Arr, pap. Arr, pap. Arr, pap. Arr, pap. The first emergency seas directomy course in, in Canada, we couldn't have done it without our pap, and it's an essential surgical skill that uh, rural physicians that provide obstetrical surgical services need to require to, to, uh, to help save lives. To me, RPAP uh, means partnership. For us at the office of CME and PD, we have really relied on RPAP since its inception. RPAP has really been there to support uh, rural health practitioners. And it supports us with the, all the ongoing continuing medical education. It makes our teams much stronger and much more professional. So I think it really supports the patients in that way by making their physicians more competent and more happy to be in these small towns. The shadowing opportunities through RPAP have been extremely well received. And later on, I see these same students coming in now as doing electives in our clinic or going into the longitudinal training program because they're so intrigued by rural medicine. For me specifically, they've been very supportive of gathering data. Specifically to endoscopy, we, we believe that rural and regional distributed endoscopists provide high level endoscopy services, but without without research and data to prove it, it's just we think, we think. And so RPAP has been very supportive of, 
uh, at least a couple studies that we've done that is actually giving us the data to show that we are providing high level care. RPAP has had an incredibly successful experience in celebrating not only the commitment, but the excellence in care and impact of rural health care across Alberta. We didn't have much interaction with, you know, with the universities after graduation. RPAP changed that. You know, we have now a significant interaction with the universities. We're called on often to participate in committees to do with CME. RPAP brings communities together in support of healthcare providers and healthcare. I think that's one of the most important aspects to uh, the function of this agency. I can think of many students who've uh, gotten excited about a rural career and uh, maybe decided on a rural career based on some of those early exposures like the RPAP Skills Weekends. Uh, so that inspiring piece of it that RPAP does so well. Uh, RPAP has been very successful in building and maintaining relationships with government, Alberta Health for instance. In terms of size, I think it is one of the most efficient, nimble organizations uh, that I've worked with. It has just changed the culture of rural health care to being valued, important, safe, high quality, um, and worth preserving. You've made a, a difference by being a consistent, positive presence in rural communities that advocates what's best for rural providers and ultimately rural patients. Uh, people can count on us. RPAP is still very vital, a vital organization. They know what they're going to do, they know their plans, and they I can, I think, perfectly execute it. I can't think of anything in terms of healthcare in this province probably that, that uh, has been as successful um, as RPAP. Well, congratulations, RPAP, on 30 years of just doing excellent work. You've done amazing things. You've been so supportive to our community. Congratulations, RPAP, on 30 years of success uh, in rural health care. Uh, you've done an amazing job, and I'm looking forward to the next 30. I would like to congratulate all of the people, all of the wonderful people that have worked with RPAP over this last 30 years. Uh, it's been a pleasure to know you and to find ways of collaborating together and partnering on some programs. It's delightful to know that uh, 30 years ago this started with an idea, some committed people. Uh, you deserve the, all the accolades you can have and I'm sure rural Albertans thank you. Good job. I want to sincerely thank everyone who participated in making these 30 for 30 videos, and particularly Bobby Jones, who's the master behind the camera. Having said that, if you like what you saw, please like below, leave a comment, and we'll put your name into a draw for some awesome RPAP swag.